breaking news. And Cameron Stouth is going to break it. He's the a journalist. He's the author. His most recent book, In the Name of God, The True Story of the Fight to Save Children from Faith-Healing Homicide. And I, this is serious stuff. And the book is out. It's in bookstores all over the country right now. And, and really an astounding read. Cameron, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tom. Um, I, uh, you know, first of all, tell me about this um, faith healing homicide. What is faith healing homicide? That's when you don't take your kids to a doctor and they die. And, you know, at first I was thinking that's not as bad as uh, shooting your child or drowning your child in a bathtub. But then the more you think about it, uh, some of these kids lie around for weeks, months, years in, in agony and then they die, and honest to God, I think that's probably worse than, than being shot by your own parents. And, and the parents are doing this because they, they are members of Christian cults that, uh, that assert that prayer, it will heal all illnesses if you truly believe enough, and that modern medicine is wrong, unnecessary, uh, from the devil, what? Well, if you're born holy, which is what they consider themselves, then you have no risk at all. Uh, God will take care of you no matter what happens, and even if you die, you go straight to heaven, which is nice because everybody else who has ever been born goes straight to hell. If your kids die, it's no big deal. Everybody in the church loves you more than ever because you made the ultimate sacrifice, and you might be uh, next in line to be the new prophet. Now, this sounds like crazy talk, Cameron, but you have investigated uh, one of the largest of the cults of this type in the United States. It's right there outside Portland, Oregon, and uh, made a startling discovery just in the last uh, few days here. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, uh, a colleague of mine, Dan Tilken of KATU uh, TV, it's the uh, ABC affiliate here in Portland, mm -hmm. um, he is going to announce in four hours that uh, in one of the affiliates of the Church of the Followers of Christ, this one in Idaho, just across the border, that for the last two years there have been more and more kids dying. That ha it has not been reported. There will be no prosecutions because Idaho is one of the many states in which faith-based abuse and homicide is legal. Now, wow, that's incredible. Um, I understand that there are 133 children's graves out of a total of 300. That's exactly right. Um, I, I watched one of them being dug, and it, it's, it's sickening. Um, wow. These people, they love their kids. They honestly do. Now, I'll tell you, one uh, glimmer of hope is that they are not your average perp. They will respond to the system if the system responds to them by making this illegal. They're not uh, homicidal maniacs. Right. They're not drug abusers. They they can be reasoned with. But so, in other words, that. in other words, if they lived in a state where refusing to give your child antibiotics when they have pneumonia and they're dying. Uh, or some even worse disease, you know, MRSA or something. Um, right. If living in a state where it, you could actually go to jail for not treating your child when they're sick or refusing to give your child di insulin if they're diabetic. Yes. Um, then they would do it. The, they would do it. The, they would do it. They would simply go they, along yeah. with it. I mean, well, as that's... Christian scientists have all over the country for years and years, I mean, this is not the first religion to come along and say you can pray away sickness. That's right. Um, now, in the cases we had here in Oregon, uh, there were four of them. In the very first one, uh, it was a death of a two-year-old girl. She had a horrible thing on her neck that uh, starved her and suffocated her over a long period of time. Father got 90 days in jail, wife got off. The second one, little girl went blind, 90 days in jail for both parents. Then another one, the third one, Parents go to prison for six years, and in one that's coming up, it's going to be ten years, and uh, it's making an impact. It's so, and really so the out. cult, the cult uh, members in in Oregon are are starting to take their kids to the doctor when their kids get sick. But yeah. in Idaho, it's illegal to prosecute them for this. 
Yeah, it is. I've talked to the prosecutor there, and he was uh, only too happy to get rid of me. He, he thought I was just a pest for even wondering why uh, I would be attacking freedom of religion. America. Seriously? They, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's how they, they frame it as uh, freedom of religion. It's not freedom of religion. It's free, freedom of child abuse. Do these people uh, also use their... I mean, you know, I know there are some people who use religion to justify beating their children. Do they do that also, or is this just they, limited they, to medicine? They, they, some, some of these crimes... I, 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 I cried every day when I wrote some of these chapters. Uh, a guy beating his daughter to death with, with a stick, making her brother watch. Uh, no prosecution. Whoa. Because he was what? Beating was the devil out of her? He was a preacher. He was beating the devil out of her. They <laughs> believe the devil gets in you and they'll sit on you. Uh, the exorcism is very, very common. Um, they kidnap people. Uh, they kidnap old people, elderly people. I, I know a case in which two grown men sat on their elderly father as he cried and begged to go to the hospital and... Finally, he gave up and died. His wow. son. Wow. And this is a Christian cult. These are Christian cults. And, yeah, if and, you want to call that Christianity. Yeah, well, they call themselves Christian cults. Let's, let's, let's say that. Uh, we're talking with Cameron Stouth. His new book is In the Name of God, The True Story of the Fight to Save Children from Faith Healing Homicide. And, uh, you know, breaking news, they've just found one of these cemeteries uh, filled with children's graves. I'm assuming these children don't get vaccinated either. Are they dying of, of uh, yeah, preventable there are illnesses? Ma- there are massive outbreaks of uh, epidemics. Uh, it's been going on forever. Hundreds of kids will get sick in one of these uh, communes. Wow. And is there any, uh, you know, if it's illegal in Oregon, is there any effort to make it illegal in Idaho? I mean, how do, how do these laws come into place in the first place that, that allow... There is one American crusader, uh, Mrs. Rita Swan. Uh, she runs an organization. The acronym is CHILD. Uh, Google CHILD Swan or Rita. Mm-hmm. And you will find that there's one person who has dedicated her life from going state to state changing laws. She's been doing this for more than 30 years, and she alone has uh, pretty much uh, revamped the American landscape in regard to faith healing abuse. How many states have laws like Idaho's that allow parents to kill their children by medical neglect in the name of Jesus? Almost all states have some kind of shield or another. Only five states have none at all. Uh, Oregon, thank God, is is now one of them, but that's only been uh, happening for about a year. I I I lived in Oregon, you know, back three years ago, I and I remember yeah. when when this when this cult uh, had uh, a couple of their kids die, and there was a big kerfuffle about it. Did that did that provoke the legislature to do away with the shield? It did, it did, but they still had to be pushed because legislators, you know, freedom of religion, right, you know? right. This, this seems like, I mean, you know, letting your children die seems like it goes beyond freedom of religion. You know, I understand, oh, I don't want a transfusion for religious reasons. Well, okay, I'll take it if, you know, if my life is at risk. You know, I mean, even, yeah. even, even the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, we usually right. when, when they hit the point where their life is at risk, they'll break down and say, okay, damn it, do it. Yeah, but there was a kid who died uh, in Washington State. Just last year, Jehovah's Witness, no, I don't want a transfusion, you know. Yeah. That, that would be unholy. Um, judge said, no, you're going to get a transfusion. Uh, they fought it and fought it. Uh, finally, judge said, put his foot down. Kid died the same day. Wow. Cameron Stout, the book, In the Name of God. Check it out. Cameron, thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate your help.